The idea of an African-American uh, community, first of all, outside the United States is, is kind of interesting. Photographer Wendell White's latest project documents a group of people who came from Chicago and settled in Demona, Israel, 40 years ago. They called their town the City of Peace. It connected so strongly to um, this interest that I had in the idea of self-determination, of building one's own community. White has long been interested in small, self-sufficient, and separate African-American communities. Demona is a, a small town uh, located in the Negev Desert. It's in the southern part of Israel. And it was a really interesting kind of connection for me because obviously my Small Towns Black Lives project was about photographing small communities in the southern part of New Jersey. When somebody wants to know, well, how far is anything in Israel? Almost always people who are familiar with the United States compare Israel to New Jersey. While many of the exclusively black towns white photographed in New Jersey have faded away or been assimilated, the city of peace in Israel continues to grow and thrive. It's the largest community of African Americans living outside of America. Novelist Emily Robito, who grew up in Princeton and whose father is African American, became fascinated with the black communities of Israel when she visited there. Her essay, along with Wendell White's photographs of the City of Peace, appeared in a spring 2000 edition of Harvard University's Transition Magazine. In 1966, their leader, who they claim is the Messiah, Ben Ami Ben Israel is what he goes by now, though he was born Ben Carter. He had a vision in 1966 uh, from an angel telling him that he belonged to one of the 12 lost tribes of Israel. He convinced several people of this and they wound up moving to Liberia first to cleanse themselves spiritually um, and then they moved to Israel claiming to be Jews. I did because of their experience in Africa, because they feel that Israel is part of Africa, there are a lot of African clothing and, a, and African patterns and colors. These images are in color, um, which is a departure from the work that I've done that's been somewhat documentary and connected to small towns, black lives. There's a strong feeling of the dialect and the mannerisms that come from the African American experience. Well, you ain't heard nobody, nobody getting killed by a gun or something, because we, like here, I'm protected. I could believe, that, like when they tell me, when my parents tell me I'm protected here, I believe them and I, I love that I'm here. Interestingly though, of course, They've discarded a lot of the what they consider negative, and I think I consider negative aspects of the of the black community in America that have to do with diet, and so they feel that they have a healthier community, um, less if not no obesity. I mean, hardly any obesity, um, diabetes, blood pressure, all of those things are hardly existent. Uh, no crime within the community, so it's a different model. I mean, it's not an unheard of model because in a sense that was what I was looking at I think when I was looking at small towns black lives. It's important to, un to understand about the community first of all that it is a polygamous community and so that has been a component of in a sense how they've thrived um, during this period of time. Uh, they have very specific structures and um, in a sense, roles for males and females within the community. On the one hand, um, you know, they've been, they've been described as a cult and their practices are cultish if you look up the, you know, the definition of what a cult is. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, I was incredibly impressed by the fact that they'd really built this community. It's really a self-sustained nation within a nation from scratch, from nothing. So. What I really like about Wendell's photographs is that you get a sense of their community. You see they've built from nothing 
uh, their houses, their school, their bakery, their fitness center, their sewing center, their, their entire infrastructure. They refer to the United States as the land of great captivity and as Babylon. And they refer to the place where they are uh, as, well, it has a lot of names, but they really see it as, as Zion. They really, really believe that it's the promised land. They certainly use the sort of Israeli Jewish notion of the kibbutz and using communal resources as a way of trying to build up their economic base. Um, many people in the community make their own clothing, uh, they have their own farm. There were lots of things that I enjoyed photographing and that I uh, found uh, compelling. In the original community in Chicago, before starting out, a number of the members of the community were musicians. It's a very complex, a complex realm. I think it's incredibly unhealthy in a lot of ways and incredibly healthy in a lot of other ways. For the people who live there, who, co who really come from the ghettos and inner cities of America, who have limited resources and limited possibility, that's a very seductive realm to live in. And I think Wendell's photographs really capture that. <laughs>